Muchas gracias, señor Rodas. Thank you, sir. Mr. Rodas, for that statement, I will now give the floor to Madame Ada Colau, who is the mayor of Barcelona, who will also make a statement. Muchas gracias. Autoridades. Thank you, authorities, colleagues, local governments. For me, it's an honor to be here as the mayor of the city of Barcelona and chair of the metropolitan air area of Barcelona. I am here on, with you on the path to Habitat 3, and it's very hopeful to hear cities increasingly speaking out in an international environment, especially in this process. And here I would like to thank the United Nations for these uh, consultations taking place beforehand, which provides us with an opportunity to express ourselves as we move along this path. And as our colleague from Quito was just saying, so effectively, we have a great capacity to make a contribution and the v voices of cities needs to be heard beyond the forum of this one. In the case of Barcelona, our presence is not new. We've been participating in these fora and I'd like to start by thanking many people for their work. Many political teams, technical teams have made it possible for Barcelona be of a city with its own voice in the international arena. And this is also due to the efforts of the prior uh, mayor, Mr. Aran, who was one of the great pioneers and put Barcelona on the map of cities in the world. And there have been other great mayors from Barcelona, like Juan Clos, who is the secretary general of Habitat 3, and that's no coincidence. Barcelona has its own voice in the world and in the discussion of the role to be played by cities. And that voice has continued with the very active participation of Barcelona in a number of different networks such as Eurocities, Metropolis and others. And this collective work uh, made possible by the work of so many people and with great humility and determination, we have included them as a, and we want to assume this legacy in order to be able to meet the challenges of the huge responsibility we must shoulder, which is to be the voice of Barcelona at a time as important as is today, for example. And when I say that we assume the voice of Barcelona in the international arena and in this discussion and we see it as a great responsibility, it's not because we want to be see ourselves as more central, having a more important role to feel better about ourselves or about Barcelona. It's because we want to be useful. We want to help. We want to collaborate. And we want to make our world and our planet a more equal, sustainable, fair, and friendly planet and world. And that's why we're here. That's why the citizens have put us in charge of the institutions that we represent today. Barcelona has always been a very committed city to defending peace, human rights, solidarity, and democracy. We have a history of this. And this is because we have something which we're very proud of, and that is very demanding citizenship. We have citizens that every day remind us that we have to do more and we have to do it better. And we should not forget that that's the very foundation of democracy, a demanding citizenship that's committed. Citizens that need to be listened to by institutions, and we need to obey them. And I think that's the most positive and hopeful items of news in recent years. In recent decades, increasingly, citizens, not just in cities, but all citizens, have been speaking out more, massively. And we see this in the movements such as the Zapatista movement or the Seattle demonstrations or other demonstrations around the world where they are demanding more democratic and less neoliberal uh, democratization. We see the Arab Spring and then we see the movements that celebrated their 15th uh, anniversary in Spain yesterday. Hong Kong, we've seen activate activists and New York and Paris where the thousands of demonstrators have discussions in squares and in the streets. These are just some of the examples of the many 
that we've seen in recent years of citizens being active. And I must stress that this is good news and it's hopeful for us. There's nothing better for democracy than responsible, committed citizens that speak out in order to demand more and better democracy. In Barcelona specifically, last March, it was our honor to welcome one of the pre-sessions for Habitat 3 in this process of pre-consultations, and we had a session that was focused on the issue of public space. The draft that's in the documentation includes a lot of material that was worked on in that session that was very positive. I won't go into it in detail, but I did want to stress the fact that the quality of public space in our cities and in urban environments is one of the most key aspects in guaranteeing democratic quality, the democratic quality of urban spaces. That is, par excellence, the very nature of democracy. If we go back to ancient Greece, where people meet in squares on a level playing field with equal rights and equal responsibilities, it's a public democratic space of cities. There are great conflicts due to growing inequalities in our cities, it's also subject to the conflict of private interests who want to privatize common spaces. And there it's very important that local governments make our voices heard and provide public leadership in order to protect that public space as a fundamental space for democracy and to provide for democratic participation of citizens those citizens that are de demanding to be center stage in developing public policy. The concept of public space is also closely linked to another concept which we also think is key and that is the right to a city. The right to a city is a concept that we've been developing in a number of different regions, not all regions, but Latin America. It's been worked on a great deal with the, in fact, Ecuador has enshrined it in its constitution, also in Europe. But I also know there are other regions that are distrustful of the concept of the right to a city because they fear, logically, that the right to a city might then presuppose more and greater urbanization. In other words, more cement. And here I just want to clarify that those of us who talk about the right to a city we do not want to see more cement. That's not what we mean by it. On the contrary, we want to see more nature and more green in our cities. And we want to make sure that our cities are much more sustainable. Today, speaking of the right to a city means guaranteeing democratic rights in the city for each and every citizen, no matter where they come from, regardless of their administrative status and equally in all territories. So what we're talking about here is guaranteeing rights equally for all citizens in urban environments around the world. And that's what we mean when we talk about the right to a city. We think it's a key element that needs to be picked up here. Let me give you an example of the importance of talking about public spaces and the right to cities and to make that concrete and to make it specific in terms of assuming responsibility. Let me give you an example of the daily reality of a mayor, which is m my experience, but I'm sure that many of the mayors here today will have shared this experience. This morning I was taking my child to a public school in Barcelona and I met a father or another parent who said that he'd been spending five years unemployed without any income and without being able to find a job. Then I took the metro and a woman talked to me and explained that she's a single mother with a number of children and she has minimal income and doesn't make it possible for her. She can't afford to pay the rent. Then I go to the street and in the street a family stops me and says that they are losing their house because some international investment funds had bought thousands of uh, housing units just by speculation and it impacted this family. So the first thing we need to do to respond to this is that everything that I'm being required of as the institutional responsibility that I represent, it doesn't just depend on me. It depends on states. It depends on the jurisdictions that are super lo local. But I can't respond with excuses. I want to be responsible. As a local government, I want to be able to respond to each and every citizen 
when what we're dealing with is fundamental rights for those citizens. And that's why we're here, and I'm concluding now. This is something I would very much like to emphasize. We're not here to compete with states. Local governments are asking for a more central role and want our voice to be heard. What we want is for financing mechanisms to be revised, because clearly they're insufficient. When we ask for that, we are not asking to play a more important role in order to compete with states or replace them. To the contrary, we are urgently calling for cooperation that cannot be postponed. All institutions need to be improved at all levels, regional, local, state, supranational, such as the United Nations, which is the maximum expression of this. We are all here to defend fundamental rights and to implement them, to make sure that they're respected and that each and every person is able to live a dignified life, those who live in our cities especially. And we need to cooperate more to that end. That's the message. That's also the message being sent to us by our citizens. They are saying, don't fight amongst yourselves. Don't have turf wars. Cooperate and coordinate your efforts to work towards specific goals. And in that regard, we like to talk about sometimes feminizing policy and feminizing politics and institutions. And I'm pleased to see here that there are more women at this panel than usual, because very often in the United Nations, there aren't enough women. We need to feminize politics, not just to have more women in places of visibility and in order to develop policy, not just for that, but also to radically change the values and priorities that have prevailed in the last decades of wild neoliberalism. We need to work more in a network, put our goals ahead of individual interests. We need to follow the logic of caring for the most vulnerable. That needs to be the top priority above and beyond economic interests in the short run or speculation. Clearly, that doesn't mean that we're anti-economic. On the contrary, we want investments for our cities, but good investments. We want investments in the future that will generate wealth and opportunity for everyone in equal circumstances. To conclude, and following the idea of feminization of politics, which we hope will herald in a new era, where women can also play an important role, I cannot but end this statement by saying that Barcelona is a European city. I cannot but reference the crisis of the millions of people who are now asking for asylum and refugee status in Europe. We need you in the United Nations to help us to convince the states of Europe to radically change their policies. We are profoundly ashamed of the cities, those cities who want to welcome, those who want to provide a safe haven and defend human life and dignity of all persons. We want to be able to help. We want to share responsibility to relocate, welcome, and integrate people who are knocking on our door today, who are fleeing war and poverty. And we are profoundly embarrassed and ashamed, and let me emphasize, profoundly ashamed by the fact that thousands of girls and boys, older people, men and women, sick people, are dying, drowning in the Mediterranean, or are suffering from the cold at the borders of Europe. It is not proper for first world cities and states who want to be examples of democracy and human rights. If Europe wants to continue to be a reference and model of human rights and democracy, then it needs to radically change its policies. And we'd like to ask you for your help, and we'd like to offer our help to collaborate to change those policies and to be able to be proud of being European. Because again, to end of all of this, in the policies vis-a-vis -vis inequality, the policy on immigration or welcoming refugees, the policy to create a more fair and less speculative economy, in all of these policies, we need to cooperate in order to guarantee rights. And if we don't cooperate, then we're all going to be in play. Nobody will be free of this. People are suffering at the regional, local, state level, and the international level. And they are suffering from a huge crisis of legitimacy. And citizens 
see institutions as very far away and alien because bureaucratic excuses are used to not meet their most basic needs. So we need to cooperate and from Barcelona we humbly offer our services to help in any way that we can. But we don't want Quito to be just another meeting on the international agenda. We want there to be a before and an after Quito. We want Quito to change things. We want Quito to go towards urbanization based on rights, cooperation with the position, and the central role played by all of us and by the cities. There's an enormous opportunity here. Quito can be a historical opportunity for all of us. And we want to strongly call upon everyone to not let this opportunity pass us by. Thank you.